All right. <coughs> oh, man. I think I swallowed something the wrong way. Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Good. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So we have Christian, Larry, and Paul. Hello. Ah, Christian and Larry. Didn't I? Ah, we've been conversing back and forth, haven't we? Larry, are you are you the same Larry that I'm that I owe an email to from a few days ago? Uh, I don't know from a few days ago. No, uh, we talk. Uh, we changed emails a while back. I was going to send you one today about setting up a time I'd like to talk to this yeah. person, but I haven't shot it off recently, so. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, I, I have you on my. You don't owe me. I figure I owe you to to set something up. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I have. I had no idea where we where we left off because I have a note on my calendar that says email Larry, um, but I had to go back and research what it was that I was supposed to email you about. Yeah. That's okay. You were you were going to go away for uh, you were going to be away. For, I'd done we done a couple emails. You were going to be away for a week, and I said yeah. I'd catch them afterwards. It wasn't. Uh, it didn't have to be done. It didn't have a sense of an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no problem. I just want to make sure, make sure I wasn't neglecting you too bad. No. Uh, all right, awesome. Let me try to find the size of my screen here so I can share it. One second. Uh, HPTI. So many things open. So how is everybody doing? Give me a quick uh, rundown of where you are with the course and uh, if you have any, any quick questions and then I'll start with a, a little program about to about the projects and stuff. Anyone? I can start if you want. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm, I'm from Belgium, actually living in Spain. Um, and for the moment I'm at course, uh, let me see, at uh, video 55 in the week four video lectures. So that's about where I am. I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay, very good. Are you enjoying the course, Christian? Very much, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah indeed. Actually, I did already a seven-day live course, as you know from the emails I send you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not new, and still there's a lot of new stuff coming up. So that's nice, yeah. Yeah, that was, that's what I kept finding when I was going through the course the first time is that um, is that a lot of it was stuff that I just uh, a, a good as a refresher, and then a lot of stuff were just bits of information that I didn't know that sort of that sort of helped me connect the dots or you know put together some of the learnings that I had from uh, other courses previously. Yeah, that's my that's my experience also. Your experience. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome, awesome. And uh, anybody have any questions uh, specifically about the project, about the video or the uh, script breakdowns or anything like that? Yeah, I had a question. Uh, this is Paul. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I had a question about, I've done a lot of reading on deepeners and inductions, and I don't remember which particular ones that they selected. Is there, is there a particular uh, number video that I can go back to just to see which ones they want to use? Because, you know, you do your little eight-minute piece, and they just said you can't add extra pieces, and you have to just do exactly what we've said. And I kind of forget, because I... Constantly reading about inductions and deep learning. I want to refresh my memory before I go to that. Did you hear that? I one uh, one just texted me and said he had a, a computer problem and. We'll be back on. Uh, it doesn't matter what what deep and induction you use, really. Uh, there's not, uh, you know, we, we don't have uh, a uh, a numbered list of what's where. We, we we do recommend everyone make notes while they you know watch the videos, so you know where to go back to find the stuff you want. Uh, but uh, just for your project, you can. You can go ahead and use any deep neural induction that you know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. For some reason, I'm not seeing the screen. I'm just seeing the little part that lets you know if you raise your hand. Is there not a screen on right now? 
Yeah, Juan, uh, Juan uh, isn't uh, showing his screen. I think right now he's not even on the call, really. He's trying to reconnect. Oh, he's on the... It's, as soon as he gets on, I'll see a screen again. Um, if he shows it, yeah. I, okay. He may or may not show a screen. Okay. Now, what I want to do where do you get to the new Bubula? I, I don't see that. There is no Bubula. It's there right at the bottom, at the bottom of the course page. It, it has a link to the class discussion. Okay, that's the place. All right, great. Yeah. Yeah, the... I have a very bad connection quality here, then. When you speak, it's kind of loud and, dis and uh, distorted. And yes. when I hear the other guy talking, he's very, very, very silent. Yeah, everyone's connection is a little different. I, uh, it, because everyone has individual audio control, plus then the system does its audio control, so it, it, it can sometimes be challenging. You're saying mine is very loud? Yeah, yours is actually going way into the... Yours is very loud and fuzzy, and yeah. he's very soft when I hear the other gentleman from Spain. Yeah, uh, let, me, let me change mine here. Can we adjust it? I don't see any adjustment on our sound. How is that? A little better? Now you're quiet. Okay. This is like barely hearing. Not too quiet, huh? Yeah, barely. Can See this? I just turned up my say something there. Hello. Yes, I'm working on my settings. Is that any different? You're you're pretty pretty quiet. And I'm getting a reverb now. All right. Technology, Sorry, technology is beautiful when it's working. That was. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, all that was totally unexpected. My computer usually doesn't freeze like that, but it just died. I kept talking to myself. I have no idea uh, where I lost you. So, so anyway, anyway, let's pick let's it back, pick up. back up. We were okay. talking to Christian. Uh, we had gone back and forth a little bit on some emails, all right, Christian? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about the the few the few nuggets of information that are that are coming out of the class that are good for you, right? Is that correct? All right. And um, do you have anything else to add, Senor Christian? No, actually, the, the this first time for me is just checking out how it all works. Um, for next week, I'll be um, a bit more um, questioning and. Um, maybe telling a little bit okay. about the things yeah, that we were experience. But for now, I just wanted to check out how this webinar works, um, technology-wise also, but it seems to work quite OK. So for next week, you'll mm -hmm. find me talking a bit more. Yeah, and you're, and you're the one that can't make it to Monday calls because they're at 3 AM your time. Is that correct? Yeah, well, actually, I think it's 5 AM because there's a nine hour difference, huh? Oh, OK. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nine hour, nine hour difference. So right now it's five p.m. p.m. your time. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. So moving on. Let's see. Mr. Ray joined us. Everybody else has been here. Uh, let's move on a little bit. I'm gonna go here to the student portal and go to the Hip 100 class. Have you all gotten a chance to check out the new forum? No, not yet. No. Yeah, all right. So right. I'm just on it now, uh, Juan, and I like it. it looks good. Uh, yeah. Is there a way of, of, of marking what we've already read so I, so we don't go to there's postings? I don't know. I haven't checked it out yet. Totally. I'm figuring it out. 
uh, like if uh, someone pulls to an old one when we've already read, is there a way of us knowing that? Yeah, um, so Larry, I'm not really sure because I haven't had enough time to explore it. Um, but I would imagine it has some sort of functionality to give you, you know, to let you know when people reply to your stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Kind of like what Hypnothoughts does? Uh, not that that's that could be part of it, but the other part of it is like as you look down the screen that you've got up there, there's a whole lot of things. So I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up because I hadn't been on the new one yet. And so I'll read right. welcome and what have you. And finish that up today. What I'm curious about if someone posts like under critical thinking for hypnotists, which is the third from the bottom that's showing right now, or the one you've got, uh, given advice on, on your whatever, whatever. If I've read mm -hmm. that. Now if someone, say in a day or two, post something to that particular link, will I have any know that is there any way I would know that something new is in there? Or also is there oh, a, I see. a way of me knowing yeah. I've already read that other than trying to be more yeah, Juan. Um, Juan. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, go to uh, go up on your screen. Just go to the Hypnosis 100 class discussions forum rate in the breadcrumb. In the breadcrumb. Home. No. Okay. Click on that. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> rate. It says home I'm forums sorry. at the top of the individual. There you go. Right there. That's where that link takes you to, is to that page. And then you can see, other than the top two, which are pinned in yellow, the other ones are listed in chronological order, right? 10 hours ago, 10 hours ago, 12 hours ago, right? So yeah. it, it, as you scroll down one, 13 hours ago, if you know you visited yesterday, there's nothing new on the sports hypnosis, right? It was two days ago was the last new. So that tells you, you know, that tells what's, you what's new today. You know, the, the most recent thing yeah. will be at the top. So it doesn't so, notify you, but but uh, but it, it does give you a way to know if, if people have replied. Well, it notifies uh, yeah. you on any, on any discussion. You can subscribe to the discussion and get email <coughs> notifications. But. Ah, okay. So just for my clarification, what I, I believe you said is that if someone posts, like if someone were to post something now on that sports one, it would move it up to the top. Yes. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. So what was this breadcrumbs thing in the orange? I didn't, I don't see anything like that. There's no... No, I think it was the breadcrumbs he's talking about the these. Breadcrumb. That breadcrumb. Oh, shows I see. where you are. It oh, shows okay. us the, the, pa the path that we've taken. We're in home forms. This... <laughs> So basically, right. if you just press each one of those, if I went through each one of those, I'm going to see the discussions. I can read them and then be all caught up in the whatever's new at the top. I can just hit that one. Yes. <laughs> okay. And to, to respond, you just respond if you have something to, to add. Yeah. Yeah, you would, just, uh, you would just start typing at the bottom. I don't know if you have to be subscribed to the forum. How do you oh, okay. So here, so here you can fa you can favorite or you can subscribe it, and I would assume that favoriting would would keep it towards the top for you. Um, what do you mean, keep then, it towards the top? No, why well, you when don't you go have to, to the, subscribe, when you go favoriting to the main, won't keep it towards the top. Favoriting okay, doesn't really does matter. Favorite. No, oh, there's no. That's weird that they give you the ch the chance to um, you know, to categorize it like that, and then. There's well, no way to search it. That's I mean, it does it, it does count, but it doesn't count in any way you need to. Uh, I mean, that yeah. we don't need to go into that. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. That's, well, maybe sus sus subscribing then would be the way. To, yeah. The way to go with this. So. Cool. Subscribing well, just. Gets all right. You, so. Subscribing just gets you an email response, and mm -hmm. once when you're if you're reading it, I mean, you're already. <laughs> You're, you're a member, you can reply. Just type in the bottom or hit reply if you go go to one of the discussions and you can see there's anyone, just click one. Yeah, this is I mean just like any just like any forum really. 
And then, see, oh, okay, stop moving. Go up to the top. Up. Okay, right there is good. See, and just anywhere. Okay, see, it says author, pose, space, reply. Yeah, you're right there. You can just hit reply to reply directly to any post. Or you can just type in there to reply to the, to the topic. All right. Anyway, so that is the discussion forum, and of course, you are welcome to use it as you please. Add uh, questions about the class or about, I guess, anything that is hypnosis or business of hypnosis related, and uh, we can at least direct you to the right place if you know, even if your questions can't be answered there. Um, Richard, are you? Uh, we haven't really talked about the group on HypnoThoughts, but is that uh, that group's going to be for alumni only? Is there going to be a, a main group for anybody that's been involved in HPTI? Only after they've completed Hypnosis 100. <coughs> so after they've completed <coughs> Hypnosis 100, they can, they, they'll be able to join. A, an HPTI group on HypnoThoughts as well, right? And the Hypnotis 100 also makes you eligible for the ones that haven't been here before uh, for discount registration for additional courses. So now, what as far that, as the... Sorry? What is the forum on, on HypnoThoughts going to be called? Is it Hypno 100 Forum or something? The one that we have access to after this? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that it, even if it's being created, but if uh, I would say it's probably something like friends of HPTI or or Juan. students of HPTI. Yeah. Juan, it's Krista's group. It's the link that you have. Right. The, alum, uh, the alumni group. Sixth, it's your sixth link right there, where it says student and alumni group. The alumni and students group. Oh, okay. So you, we're opening that up for anybody that's finished this course. Yes. Okay. See, I didn't know that. Okay. All right. That'll be fine. So, where's the Where's the one he's pointing out? I don't. Oh, student alumni group on the right hand side. <coughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, right there. It's under discount registration on the right. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to show you how to get in from HypnoThoughts and how to get in from here. Uh, I have a question that's sort of unrelated, but it, I was trying to find the scripts on HypnoThoughts to look at further scripts, and I mm -hmm. couldn't seem to find it. I looked, are you talking about I better, what scripts are you talking about? Well, the, they, they supposedly have a script file on HypnoThoughts that I, I thought I could look at, you know, more scripts than that were offered that little booklet? Mm, there is a script book. I mean, not a script book, but a script group. Um, but the scripts are just kind of posted on there. There are some discussions. Uh, there's just a ton. It's hard to wade through it for me because it's it's a lot of it posted on the main thread of the forum. Uh, but, it, but it is just a script, uh, a, a scripts group. There is no... I don't think it's associated with HypnoThoughts at all. I don't. So I, you might want to contact the person that actually runs that group and see, you know, so see just, if they can help. It, just look up HypnoThoughts for the group that says something about scripts. Well, yeah, on HypnoThoughts, okay. down at the bottom, you'll see the HPTI group is usually toward the top because it's usually pretty active. Um, and then you know once once you all start graduating from this class, then hopefully the HPTI 2013 group will also be active. Let me go back to scripts and see if it's anywhere here. Are you on hypno? That's hypnothoughts, right? That you're on. Yeah, this is hypnothoughts. So where did you go to get into? You view all groups. Okay, that's what I did. Yeah. So right here, groups, view all, and then uh, you can of course search. So here, let's search for scripts. <clears throat> and then here's a group, the script bank. 
I, uh, I don't want to, I wonder if I can get in through here. So they don't even tell you what this, you have to just open each one and see what it is? No, no, no. No, you go, well, you go in here and you notice that it's Chris Witherspoon's uh, group and it tells right here, please post scripts in the feature discussion scripts. To find the feature discussion, just click at the bottom of the discussion forum box. Oh, so, you know, here, here are some discussions specific to, you know, to some uh, topics, right. but then at the, at the bottom, and that was longer. You see how many pages are here. So if we click on, say, page 65, it's going to take you to the main discussion, and people just post generally around here, you know, ideas and questions about scripts and, you know, that sort of stuff. Could you do a search for a certain category, like if you want to do uh, insomnia or, or stuttering or something? Yeah, well, you can go right here to the search on Heaven of Thoughts up top. Um, Let's just search oh, for insomnia, okay. since that's what you said. Yeah. And it'll, and it'll open up this, and uh, this is even better because it tells you where it's going, so you can check. Oh, do I want to find information about insomnia, or do I want a script? So if you want a script, obviously you would look for the, you know, following the links towards the script bank, um, okay. and then for more information you would. And go then that'll to give you topics. like that'll give you the, any script that somebody submitted on insomnia. Well, no, not necessarily. That just that just sends you to you know these are separate comments. So this is a comment by Shane. I'm still waiting on suggestions on insomnia help. So obviously oh. that comment is not going to be very useful for you. Right. You know, I'm looking for help with an insomnia client. You know, a lot of those are not going to be useful for you, but some of them will. You know. Um, yeah. Okay. And especially you know especially if you look at the ones that are topics. Like let's go into here. And of course, I mean, I know this is Hypnothoughts help, not specifically HPTI help, but obviously everybody's going to be joining these groups and being a part of this HPTI community. So anyway, this would, this would just take you to the discussion, and then you can read from there. And of course, there's a lot of people that post links, you know, like, uh, right. like right. Michael Elner. And you can, I mean, you could go down the rabbit hole forever until you know everything <laughs> there is to know about insomnia, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those never-ending things. Okay, thank you. But I didn't anyway, even take up time, but I think people <coughs> enjoy knowing that. Uh, it's fine. It's always useful to show people how how to e navigate easier. So let's go to HPTI here in the all groups. We'll open up the the few things that we have going on. So uh, these groups are groups that are specific to the one-year program students. So if you were to join the program for 2014, uh, not the not the uh, not the the not the technology, but the structure of the program has changed. I don't know if the if they'll have a full one-year program or if everybody will just be kind of grouped into HPTI alumni and students. Um, I would imagine that the people that are going through the whole program will have, besides the forums that you have in class, you may have a way to to be in touch, kind of like these groups outside of class. That way you can continue to build the community that we've been building. But anyway, if you go to the HPTI alumni students group, here's where you'll be able to join after you've completed this class, of course. And as you can see, there are a bunch of discussions uh, asking you know, about projects, uh, <laughs> opportunities for networking, uh, information about live trainings, questions and you know things about specific techniques and then of course the main forum just you know with questions and, and links and videos and stuff and for example here uh, the the students were asking for us to share for us to share some of our projects from last year uh, to see if they could get some ideas for their projects and then of course a few of us came in here and replied and added this so there's a lot of value added in the groups one you know once you've uh, completed the course, there's a whole lot more than just, you know, what's, what you've been learning. Um, and you can sort of keep in touch there and find out about, I don't know, you know, some other students, not just me, like how, how a class is or who likes what or doesn't like what and, you know, what would be a best fit for you as far as continuing uh, education, continuous training. Uh, does anyone have any questions about this forum in particular right now? All right.
right. I will take that as a no. <coughs> Looks good. Looks good. Awesome. Does anyone have questions so far about the continuing classes, or is anyone uh, considering taking any of the classes that are coming up in January? We have critical thinking, psychology, and the live class in January, which is also at the same time as graduation for the four-year program. Anyone uh, considering coming to to visit us for this? You have to myself. Take the well, excuse me. Go ahead. Myself, I was thinking of doing that, but it will depend, of course, if I if I finish this with with success. Mm -hmm. You were thinking of doing uh, what, Christian? The critical thinking. Critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a really good class. It's a strong foundation for the rest of the program because mm -hmm. it sort of opens up the floodgates about you know in in your thinking about. Um, not only about the way that we're being influenced, you know, the social influence portion of it, but mm -hmm. also the, you know, the idea that a lot of, I don't know, like you look at a cereal box and it says, you know, made with real strawberry flavor, you know, and then, <laughs> so, so it teaches you to sort of analyze the things that you read and go, well, that's not really real strawberry, that's just real strawberry flavor, like, you know, yeah. something that tastes like strawberry. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a it, it's a pretty fun class. It's pretty loaded with information. Uh, it's a three week class, and uh, yeah, of course, after you, you've you know, after you've done your uh, yeah. after you I was just wondering because for the project, I'll have to. Um, I don't know if I'm able to do it in English. I might have to do it in Dutch with the people okay. here. Would that be a problem? Uh, I don't think I mean, that would be a problem. I mean, obviously, if, if Dutch is the language that you're going to use and that is going to be most useful for you, I'm sure that would be fine. Uh, obviously, Scott would appreciate a, a, tr a translation, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. I think the main point of the video is to show that you have that sort of flow and that you're able to get, you know, get into the induction with the client and that sort of stuff. So I would personally think that, that uh, your own language would be best, you know, would be the, the way that that you will want to use it. And uh, Christian, you, you don't yeah. need to provide a translation. Uh, nope. you know, Scott, Scott will make comments just on, uh, you know, the, the visual cues and then uh, we'll ask someone who, uh, who, who can understand the, the video to, uh, to listen to it and let us know what you know what's going on so you don't okay have that's more that. more than perfect yeah, yeah thanks all right awesome so there's where you go to register and uh, of course if you want to register for something that is ninety nine dollars or more you can always do the PayPal bill me later and it gives you just time to pay it's basically a little a little extension of credit uh, let's move back here where are you, where are you there to pay I didn't catch the first part uh, right here, so in oh, your signing in your up for any one of those, any one on the right yeah, in, of the courses. So in your in your student portal, you would go to discount registration, which lands you on this page. Oh, okay. And then this page has all the the buttons that you need to click for registering for the following month's classes. You now, know, so you can do that as you go. So all of these I see are labeled when they are and stuff. It, it, I, I seem to recall hearing that we had to do the law one next, or you, that's like the, the gatekeeper to get out of the next courses. And that mm -hmm. one happened in December. And, and I didn't want to take two. I barely can finish this one. No, no, no. No, Paul. Um, so the, the law and ethics, is, it wasn't a floodgate. It was just the fact that it was uh, timely. You know, it was just about to start. When, oh, uh, when when people were going halfway through the course, so we were saying, hey, this is a required course if you want to take the internship next year. So, you know, if if you're if you're deciding to do that, why don't you take the course now? But however, the course itself, law and ethics, will be given again here in February, which is before the internship actually starts. Okay. Yeah. So, um, how, how much do each of these courses take in time, roughly? I mean, I suppose that's a tough question because people could spend more or less time. I spend a lot no, of time on this course. Yeah, uh, it's it's actually uh, a fairly easy question. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling people basically um, 
for any course you take, you should plan on being able to devote about 10 hours a week to it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, okay. uh, it's fairly easy to know um, because most courses are set up in the same way. You know, a certain amount of video, a certain amount of live training, and then a certain amount of projects. However, some of them have a little bit of a, of a balance uh, issue. You know, some of them have a little more intensive projects and less video. Some of them have more video and easier projects. So I can't tell you, I mean, I can tell you specifically to each course, uh, uh, kind of, you know, from what I remember. But, I mean, it's been, it's already been two years since I've taken a lot of these. Right. Uh, almost, almost two years. So, um, so yeah, I can, uh, most of them will take about 10 hours a week total of time investment. Some of them will be six hours of video and four hours of reading and, uh, and classes and, and such. Some of them will be eight hours of video and just two hours of, of something else. Okay. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Any additional questions about these? For uh, those of you that are, that are considering doing the whole program in January, when you come to the Techniques and Transcendence live, uh, you get to meet a bunch of people from the two classes that have now, that will, you know, by then, have now graduated from HPTI. Um, I know at least three or four or five of the, of the 2012 students will be there, and of course, most of the 2013 class. So if you can make it to the live training here, uh, that is an awesome, awesome weekend of, of learning and networking and everything is really fun. Um, anyway, as far as continuing with the program, there is a suggested course sequence for specifically for Christian and Larry who haven't been here before. I know you, Paul and Ray, you've probably seen this before. But right here on your student resources, you have the student uh, and the suggested course sequence. And what this shows you right here is the classes that are in bold italics right here are uh, required if you want to complete the, the Certified Hypnosis Practitioner Program, which is the entire um, HPTI curriculum, which now has changed. When we took it, uh, we took everything that you see on the, on the page here. Now it, it requires the bold classes and it requires an elective for each of these, uh, times, you know, you have to take it, uh, like the Techniques and Transcendence, you have to take it once, live at least, and there are four opportunities to do that next year in different parts of the country, and then you have to, or not have to, but if you want to, you can continue to take the Techniques and Transcendence uh, as a second time, as an elective, and get credit for it uh, as part of your uh, certification as a practitioner. And then, uh, of course, some of these courses in here are going to be the NLP and the contextual hypnotherapy class. You're going to have regression and parts. You're going to have uh, group demonstration hypnosis. Those are going to be the electives. And then the ones that are being required are the ones that Scott and Richard, uh, and I'm sure through all the testing that we've done through the past couple of years, have decided that are the important um, for your well-roundedness as a hypnotist, you know, for your building your skills outside of just a hypnosis technique, the things that a hypnotist should know in order to be able to work with clients um, like this, you know, law and ethics, critical thinking, uh, anatomy, neuro, I mean, they're awesome, awesome classes. So, does anyone have any questions about this specifically or any additional classes or anything? Which one, which class is the one that sort of walks you through setting up the, the uh, post-hypnotic suggestions, the whole sequence of what you're going to do? Is there one like that? Um, the whole sequence of what you're going to do. Um, are you talking about which class will teach you sort of protocols from start to finish, like takes you by the hand, like step by step what you should do? Yeah, because I I was taught that, but we got more like they talk about in the course. We got sort of a cookie cutter thing that was you know fit a few techniques and a few things. But I'd like to expand that and see because I've been seeing clients for seven years and I've developed my own. But I'm sure other people have like you know, yeah. really good ideas because I've seen that in 
in reading, I mean, doing the videos and, and the reading here that there's, you know, even though I've read most of Yapco before, I, I'm rereading some of it. But yeah. you see what I'm saying? It, it's like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I don't care how, how much you know about hypnosis. If somebody walked you through how they did it from, from the telephone call to how you mm -hmm. actually say, okay, this guy's got insomnia, so I'll, I'll choose kind of these approaches or something. And, yeah, and exactly. all of us would be different, but what chunk is that? Because that's what yeah. I'm most yeah, interested I can, in. Yeah, I can definitely help with that. So there are, there are three things about that that I like to, that I like to say. First is that uh, HPTI primarily uh, has this attitude about, <laughs> not being, about not being rigid, you know, about, right. about being flexible with your approach. So most of what you learn at HPTI, while you learn some techniques, uh, is how to put those things together, you know, how to, how to naturally or logically work through the process with a client. Not many classes are actually going to give you, uh, this is what you do, and this is what you do next, and this is what you do next. Uh, no, I understand, but, I understand that, and that's what I like about this. this that's why mm -hmm. I'm here, because every other class I've seen or things I've read always give me the cookie cutter, like here's what mm -hmm. you do, here's what you do. I use intuition more than anything else, and yeah. so I trust that if I'm sitting in front of a client some days and I'm saying, I don't know what the heck to do with this guy. I kind of had a thought, but yeah. now with this conversation and with the intake form, which I get ahead of time, then he throws me off totally or she throws me off with some comment. I yeah. have to wing it. Yeah. I have to wing it at that moment and do something that's beneficial to the client or, or I'd have to say, you know, I have no clue about this. I'm going to have yeah. to refer you to somebody else, and I've never had to do that. But I think there's probably all kinds of tricks and techniques, not specifics, but generalities of, because that's what that's what I want to expand. I I think yeah. I'm pretty good on the fly. I I do. I've never used a script. I use bits and pieces just like we do here. I I used to read some scripts just to get ideas and maybe take a few notes, maybe a few bullet points, and then I'd go into it and I. I'd make it my own. That's what I'm. Yeah. Then, That's then, you how I have, then you already have most of the the methodology and the attitude that HPTI really teaches, which is uh, put you a step ahead, really, because most of the people that come uh, to study hypnosis have you know taken some trainings or something where they do take you. You know, this is a step by step thing. Now, HPTI teaches you the whole umbrella of things that you should know and that are important. And then it also has classes like uh, contextual hypnotherapy with, uh, where is it, context, uh, what is it they call it? And I was curious about that. What is contextual oh my gosh. hypnotherapy? I don't even see it here. Anyway, contextual hypnotherapy is uh, evidence-based approaches, and that's a class by Richard Nungard. And I'm just using it as an example. Most of the classes have an element of this, um, you know, but this one, for example, will teach you elements of dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, brief therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. So you have all these processes that are outside of what hypnosis teaches, you know, the cookie cutter approach, so that right. you can be more able to think on your feet. You know, when I go into a client session, I, I generally don't prepare a lot ahead of time, you know, depending on what it is that the session is about. But for the most part, I just like to sit there and be present and know that I have a ton of tools that I can use. You know, that if, if the client says, hey, I have, uh, I have this uh, screw that you need to take out, but it's, you know, it's a hex wrench, I can go, no problem. Is it metric or standard? I have both. <laughs> right? I mean, right. I, 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 could, I could be that specific because I, you know, because I have all the tools. And, uh, so, so I think it helps, uh, it helps me. Really you know, relieve the thinking that there has to be a step by step, and it gives you, uh, it leaves you more open to to responding in real time to what is going on and you know what you think the client needs. Um, so, that being said, about the specific classes, because they all do have a, a certain element of step by step. You know, if you take the medical and dental class, you're gonna find for example, teeth grinding protocols, right? And he's going to say, well, the first session, this is kind of what you do. Second session, this is what you do. You know, basic, uh, you know, protocols. And then there are classes like the Techniques and Transcendence, the live weekend, which are all about putting the pieces together. 
you know, in the Techniques and Transcendence weekends, uh, he'll he'll start talking and he'll get questions from questions and answers from the from the audience about uh, things that would be good to ask during a first session, things that would be good to ask during a second session, and sort of p putting all those pieces of the puzzle together, and then we break out into practice groups and we go out and actually put you know put those pieces in place and actually speak them so we learn that flow, and um, I think that's that's invaluable. Uh, no matter really, no matter how much experience you have, I always get so much value out of the the live weekends because it's you know as a hypnotist you just don't get to practice that much. You know you might get to work with clients, but they're coming for a reason. You might get to do um, you know practice with family and friends or something, but it's not the same as you know just actually being able to practice and screw up with somebody that's also learning. Um, <laughs> You know, and because right. I mean, it, it's just uh, yeah, it's just a really valuable weekend, and I think it gives a lot of the step by step, uh, or at least a good idea of how to go about, you know, taking it step by step. I totally agree with that because from day one, I've started three different groups, of hand picked three other people to do practice groups, so we just work sometimes for six or eight hours on a weekend. Mm -hmm. and just hypnotize each other and try things we wouldn't want to try with a client. And yeah. that was where I learned more than anything faster because I just I was thirsting for stuff and everything I read didn't quite do it and clients didn't quite do it because I'd have to see more and more types and and that yeah. was really good. And now when is the there's one in LA in January. Are all yeah. the rest all around the country the live ones? Yeah, let me tell let me tell you about them, Christian. I see your question. I'll get you in just a second. Okay. Um, so there are four opportunities to attend this live weekend uh, ne next year. One of them is in LA, which is January 25th and 26th, which will be at the same time as the graduation for 2013 class. Then the next opportunity is going to be in Daytona Beach in May. I'm not sure of the date, but it's during the IMDHA conference. Um, it's either pre-conference or post-conference. And then uh, the next opportunity after that will be at uh, HypnoThoughts Live in Las Vegas in July. The, I, I believe is the 18th, 19th of July is when the, the conference is, so it'll be right before or right after. And then uh, the next and last opportunity of the year will be at the Mid-America Hypnosis Conference in Chicago, which is in October, sometime in the middle of October. Uh, so those are the four live weekends, and they're all they're all essentially the same uh, as far as the presentation. But of course, you can go to all of them because every one of them will have different people. Every one of them will have you know different uh, practice opportunities and such. Um, one thing that I was going to say about the practicing during those during those workshops, those live weekends, is that we do. We do a lot of that uh, round robin uh, hypnotizing, which is something that really teaches you to to think on your feet. You're basically standing in front of another person, and the person behind them says uh, pencil, and you have to come up with an induction that includes a pencil. You know, so you can start with talking to them about how you're sharpening the pencil, and the more you sharpen, the deeper you go. Whatever you know, whatever it is that you want to come <laughs> up with. Uh, the idea is that that you're that you're coming up with an induction that's made out of nowhere. Uh, not not only out of nowhere, but maybe out of a, a word that is just completely, you know, like knife. Like, what do you? How do you do an induction with a knife? But you have to figure out a way to do it, you know, because that's the game. And um, I think those little games that we do during the te techniques and transcendence weekends are really, you know, something something else. I mean, they really get you thinking. Uh, and once you and once you do it a few times, you realize, well, it's not that big a deal. It's actually pretty easy. Um, so. That's fun. All right, Christian, you had a question. Uh, yeah, I was just, question. I was just wondering. I mean, with all these live weekends going on, if there's anything planned in Europe, and I was also wondering how many, how many students do you have in Europe? Um, that would be a question for Richard. I, I I know that there's nothing planned for next year to you know to like do a presentation in Europe. Uh, but I don't it know. It would be a little far-fetched to go to to Los Angeles and and whatever from here. Yeah, go definitely. For two days, that's a bit. Or if there is perhaps a system that could be installed, let's say a a, a Skype or a conference screen that at least people can can be there. Well, the problem, life, but kind of life. The problem with this, 
The problem with this particular uh, training is that it's so hands-on. We spend a lot of time uh, outside of the classroom, you know, hypnotizing mm -hmm. or being hypnotized. So okay. the the actual, uh, you know, streaming of it over the internet or something would be okay for short portions of the class, but you wouldn't really get the benefit of the training. Uh, but if you attend it once, you know, it's it's much better than not attending, and you definitely don't have to attend four times. You know, it's just given four times just to give people more of a chance. Uh, but I would recommend that maybe if you if you can come out to Las Vegas in July, you know, you get to experience Hypnotox Live at the same time as, you know, having a, a a two-day training with Scott and I Richard actually and registered for that in the beginning of uh, I think five or six months ago and I paid already for the Las Vegas thing oh fantastic then then just I would just plan on doing it there you know why don't you okay. just plan on coming a couple of days early I think it's a couple of days before right Richard yes it is yeah okay. so I would that would probably be a good uh, a good way for you to plan attending that weekend and I'm sure that weekend will be huge because so many of us will be there uh, I think that'll probably be the biggest techniques and transcendence weekend we'll have this year. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. All right. Anybody last minute questions? Otherwise, we'll call it a day. It's eight forty-seven. No questions. All right. Thank well, you. Thanks for Thank joining you very us. much, both of you. Thanks, Juan. Thank Richard. you, sir. Thanks for joining. Thank See you guys Monday afternoon, six p.m. Uh, not me. <laughs> All right. <no> <laughs>